It's very possible to create a Xamarin Forms application, even a useful Xamarin Forms application, that has only one page. However, most of the time, this is not going to be the case. You'll generally have many pages in a Xamarin Forms application, and the user will need some mechanism to find out where they are in the application, how to get from point A to point B to point C, and so on. One of the patterns that has been identified by Xamarin for accomplishing this is called hierarchical navigation. And you can think of it as a series of choices. So let's take a look at an example. So you have a bookshelf. A bookshelf has many books from which you can choose. Once you choose a book, you can open it up and look at the table of contents to see what chapters are in the book. From there, you can select the chapter and read the, con and read the text in that chapter. And so what this forms is this forms a path from the bookshelf to the chapter in the book. And each chapter in each book is going to have a unique path starting at the bookshelf. So let's see if we can model this in code. So I'm here in Xamarin Studio and I've got some models over here. And I've got one for each of the items that was mentioned in the slides. So I've got this data class here and this data class has a static list of books which represents a bookshelf. And that's the main relevant part of this file, this function or this method rather, down here all it's doing is it's creating some books for us to work with and it's just creating a chapter for each word in the title of each book. And so what would happen is this first one would have two chapters and the second one would have five chapters and so on. The book itself, the book class itself rather, has two properties of interest. The first is the title, so you can think of that's how we're going to identify the book that we want to that we want to look at. And then this list of chapters because books have chapters. The chapter itself is simply three public properties. The title of the chapter, so we can again identify it. The order that it comes in the table of contents because chapters are in a specific order, although we're not using this in this particular example, nor are we using visible, but it could come in handy later. So now let's take a look at the views that we're going to navigate between. So I've got one for each series of choices that you need to make, starting with the book page. And the book page is merely going to be a list of the titles of the books, so I'm going to have a text cell that binds to the title of each book and in the code behind going to set the item source to the bookshelf in the data class which of course is a list of books. Then when an item is selected get the selected item as a book and then we come to something new which is specific to navigation. So every content page is going to have this navigation property and the navigation property is going to refer to the navigation infrastructure if it exists. Now this navigation infrastructure, what it's going to do is it's going to be a container for the pages that we're navigating between. And it's also going to give us some UI that will do things like show us the title of the page that we're on currently and also give us some UI to go back to previous pages. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to push a new page on the, onto the navigation stack. So what this is going to do is push async will take a type of content page in this type in this case a table of contents page and then what it will do is it will visually replace the new page with the current page conceptually what it's going to do is it will place that new that new page on top of the current page so what you'll do is you'll end up getting a stack and of course you push items onto a stack when you select when you select a new choice and you pop items off of the stack when you go back to the previous page now we don't have to handle popping items off of the stack because as we'll see in just a minute the navigation infrastructure gives us the user interface to do that but let's see what table of contents page offers us so a table of contents page is going to show the list of the chapters and each chapter has a title and it's going to bind to the title of each chapter then in the code behind what we're going to do here is the item source is going to be the list of chapters 
Notice that table of contents page takes a book in the constructor. And then here, the title property of the content page is going to be set to the title of the book. Now, you can act now you can set this in the XAML and in fact for book page that's exactly what I've done I've set it to bookshelf because we only have one bookshelf but for each book we want to show in the navigation area we want to show the title of the book that we're on so we need to set that dynamically in the code then when the item is selected what's going to happen is again we're going to select get the selected item this time as a chapter and again we're going to push a new page this time a chapter page onto the stack and we will pass it the title of the chapter the chapter page is merely a label which is basically going to say you are reading such and such chapter and the code behind is similar to is similar to the table of contents page it sets the title and then sets the text of the label and again it's using the C sharp six string interpolation syntax to do that so now we've got our pages but how do we get this started off so over here in the app class we're going to set the main page again but instead of setting it to an instance of the first page in the application which would be book page what we're actually going to do is we're going to set it to this navigation page and then pass navigation page an instance of the first page we want to view so this navigation page will set up that navigation infrastructure and in UI for us so let's look at the code let's see how the application actually works so here's how it's going to look in iOS and I've got the title of bookshelf and I've got my four my four books here so let's just click on this first one and notice that the title in the navigation area has changed to the title of the book and we have a back button here that will take a, that will show us which that will show us the title of the previous page and then we have a listing here for each chapter click on the second one the title changes again and we can go backwards and I could keep on doing this okay that's how it looks in iOS let's take a look at how it works in Android in Android again bookshelf for the title let's open this one we get again the title changes and everything works similar to the way that it did in iOS however in Android there are there's one difference so I still have the back button up here but what I can also do is the operating system is the Android operating system provides a back button that I could also use and so I can do that again using both the back button that's provided by the application and the back button that's provided by the operating system and that's how to get started with hierarchical navigation in Xamarin forms